Oh, yeah. I know you're here for Zach Moss takes. I know you want to see that I traded him and he went nuclear, but we've got a lot of players to discuss, a lot of things to talk about. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Get prepared to win this whole season. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, September 18th, the Fantasy Footballers. Back with you. It's apparently hat day. Every day is hat day when you don't want to do your hair. <laughs> Every day is hat day when you're losing your hair. You have committed pretty strongly to the hats, Jason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I find that. It's near full-time hat day. Yeah, it's near full-time hat day. I I really like not having to worry about my receding hairline. It's it's, it's great. Wearing hats is, is <laughs> yeah. great. I mean, if I had your hair, Mike, I would burn all my hats. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, you do you. It's 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 a burden. <laughs> Wait, I'll, I'll, if you go to – it's a burden. If you go to Deucer's Alley – Oh, look at that. Oh, man, so many hats. There, Any of us take a shower today? I mean – I did. Mike yeah. took a shower? Yeah, I did oh, as well. I did, yeah. Mine's more of a Jason problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, the hat bros. Uh, I, I didn't take a shower today. Nice. I skipped it. Yeah. Who needs showers? Yeah, and you just told – Hundreds of thousands of people. Well, I we're playing pickleball later. Okay, that's, that's true. true. And I will shower after that. that too. That's, yeah, I mean, I just didn't want to double shower. <laughs> right. Yeah, we all are. You're correct. But I, I, will, sh I showered last night. I, oh, see, that's, yeah, that's perfectly I fine. I will. Night. The I do not like when you do like you have the morning shower and then you do some sort of activity afternoon and you go shower again, but your towel's not fully dry. Yeah. Oh, that's that's the worst. You got to get the other towel out. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say you, you only have one towel. Mike, or? you stick with that towel. Yes. How often do you change your towel? You just consider that a penalty for the decision to shower twice? When, how often do you guys change your towel? Uh, I change my towel about once every week and a half. I, I change mine pretty regularly, but we have like four towels hanging up in our bathroom, so I, I'll I'll just grab the other Wait, one. Wait, do you share towels with your wife? You no. Have, she, you have multiple showered yeah. towels up? Yeah. You're, this man what? right here, you expect him Who? to not have multiple shower towels? Oh, well, I'm just, the way that I'm he was. he doesn't have multiple showers in his room. The way he was expressing it was like, this is a normal thing. It's a totally normal thing. I got I'd, I got four shower hooks. Deucers. What, do you want me to not put towels on the hooks? Deucers, please, you have one towel per person up, right? One towel. Okay, thank goodness. Thought I was losing my mind. Well, we are in some ways. <laughs> uh, welcome into the show. Lots to talk about. I was driving into the office this morning, and I kind of, you know, I look at week two a little bit like you you glance out over the uh, proverbial battlefield and you survey the damage. Like, there are truths you find out through two weeks, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it gets into questions of draft loyalty to players, and I'm going to ask you guys that question later about some scenarios. But, you know, we learn a little bit more. You you, you find out a little bit of, a little bit more about the defenses. And you survey the damage to your roster, and and then you make some adjustments. I mean, anybody out there that says that they know everything that's going to happen week to week in the NFL is a liar, and that includes us. Like, we don't know. Uh, there's been a lot of surprises, and now it's our job to help you make the adjustments, make the tweaks, and uh, propel yourself towards a, a Foot Clan championship, hopefully. And so uh, that's what we're going to do. A lot of reactions. A lot of strong feelings mm -hmm. out there this week, and uh, we surveyed the Foot Clan for their sophisticated mm. reactions <laughs> to the weekend. Oh, are we back, baby? We're back. And we've got some good and some bad on the All Monday right. Punday reactions. We're going to start with the good. Yes. Jason, do you want me to oh, take the first one? No, I've, I've got you here because I love him. Zach Boss. Zach Boss. Uh, Mike Evans. Yes. Good. Looking good. Goody. James. Cooking. Okay. Mm. Oh, was that 
T.D. Higgins? It sure was. <laughs> yeah, it was. That what was about, a big bounce back. What about T.J. Rockinson? <laughs> yeah, I like that. And Jason, you threw in uh, Puka Nuclear. Yeah, baby. That's Eat it, a- owl. Oh, but there was bad. Yeah, like, like Joshua Smelly or Jafart Chase. <laughs> Jafart? And uh, wow, we'll be talking about Scam Acres. And Calvin Diddley Squat or Jerry Booty. Yeah. Why are we doing that? Yeah. And Damien Tears. Oh, yeah. Oh, Least Hall. <laughs> I'm getting all the poop jokes, This boys. is the best one of the AJ, day, though. AJ Brown pants. <laughs> that one, I feel like we got to finish with the, uh, remember the Letterman top 10? Yes. And the final oh, one's yeah. always, uh, it's always AJ Brown pants. I mean, that is, how, how have I not heard that? It is the lowest hanging, easiest fruit, and it's perfect because, uh, yeah, he, he had some brown pants on. Yeah. Well, they, they were very clean, and Rashad Penny said, no, you will stay in your dirty pants. The Jamar Chase, A.J. Brown reactions. Oh, man. For the draft wide receivers, not running back camp. Um, it's been a rough couple weeks. Jason, what were you going to? Yeah, I was. I, I wish I could give credit to whoever had the tweet. Um, I, I, I don't remember who it was, but there was a, a tweet that was saying the fantasy points per game, if you – if you go from you, – you remember last year, Devontae Smith had a goose in week one. Right. Didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. If you go from week two on, including this year, A.J. Brown pants and Devontae Smith are averaging the exact same fantasy points per game. Yeah. That's, that's why I whispered Smith might outscore Brown this year. Yeah. If, if the touchdowns don't go to A.J. Brown, I mean, Smith's going to ball out. Yeah, you saw the frustration from A.J. Brown yes. wanting to be involved, yeah. and uh, a couple weeks' worth of offensive struggles have not included A.J. Brown getting as many opportunities. I, I would not say I'm panicked. No. I think A.J. Brown's going to be great. Absolutely. I mean, so the, go go trade for him. Yeah, to me, this is very similar to the D.K. Metcalf, Tyler Lockett situation where you have a superstar human being. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, when you look at A.J. Brown – that's a dude, mm-hmm. you know, and DK Metcalf, they, they're they they're very good wide receivers. They're very good, but it's their physical abilities, their attributes, their God-given bodies that are <laughs> special and make them the ones. But for fantasy, that's not always the one. Tyler Lockett outscored DK Metcalf last year because he's just a great wide receiver, and that that's Devontae Smith. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Cam Akers. I think we found out, uh, at least I found out, about 12 minutes before kickoff that he was was a healthy scratch. It was one of those Jay Glazer bombs that he drops on a Sunday morning. And it was, I think it was about 10 minutes before kickoff happened that that started going out there. That uh, Cam Akers was going to be a healthy scratch. Uh, they're going to try and trade him and everything that happened in the middle of last year. We are right back there. And how, how unlikable is he? Uh, so here's the thing. When this happened, I think we all talked about it in the studio. There, there, we felt like there just had to be something more. There had to be some kind of personal relationship issue, attitude problem. Right. Because that was what was reported last year. But it, it was reported that this had nothing to do with attitude. That he's had a great attitude uh, and he just – got healthy scratched because of play yeah they said he had a really bad week of practice let me let me ask you this last year they went with the approach of it got out publicly that things are sour with the rams (laughs) and we're trying to trade him yeah and they couldn't trade him so this year they're trying they're trying to trade him but but he's great dude his attitude's amazing i can't believe any any team that gets Cam Akers, they would be the luckiest team ever. He's just not for us. <laughs> right. He 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 uh, went on Twitter said I am just as confused as everybody else. Dude, I'm blessed though. Uh, Kyron Williams, ninety six percent of snaps in week two. He's the RB two for fantasy, uh, and I believe that's the RB two on the week and on close the, to it on the year. Yeah, no, I'll bet it is four, on the year. He has he, four touchdowns. Yeah, he had two touchdowns week one, two touchdowns week two, uh, double-digit targets. This is um, this is a, a player I hope you picked up on waivers because he's going to be probably the waiver pickup of the season because you're going to get him all year. Obviously, we, you know, NFL's crazy. Uh, last year, there was a period in time where Cam Akers was cuttable, unusable, healthy scratch. Mm-hmm. 
And then he went on to be the the absolute dominant workhorse at the end of the year. So crazy things can happen. I don't expect to see that happening. Sean McVay came out and said, you know, there's still room for Akers to be um, involved, but that it's not going to go back and forth. Uh, so I, I think next week will be very important. And and this is Kyron Williams. This is the Kyron Williams show. Yeah, and that's that's big news for fantasy. Uh, we did get that. So we got that news prior to kickoff, barely. And then we also found out Amari Cooper had re-aggravated his groin injury ah. in Saturday's practice, and he is questionable, not expected to play. So for Monday Night Football, if you already were throwing David Njoku out there, you have an opportunity for a higher upside, I think. Elijah Moore, who, yeah. who we talked about, Mike had brought him up in the Hungry for More segment last week. Uh, he's really hungry for more if he's going to have number one wide receiver opportunity here uh, this evening. Yeah, and if you have lost Amari Cooper and you didn't realize, you, if you didn't hear this news before now and you're going, oh, man, I'm not going to have Amari Cooper and you're looking for the waiver wire, you can look towards Allen Robinson or Calvin Austin who could be on the waiver wire and have opportunities would with you rather, Deontay Johnson out. Would and you rather Rashid go Shahid tonight. Yeah, sure. Shahid. I was going to say, would you rather have Allen Robinson or, Robinson or Peoples Jones? I would rather have Allen Ro Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> it felt bad saying it, but that is the truth. Saquon Barkley exited the Cardinals game at the very end with a right ankle injury. Yeah. X-rays were negative. He's having an MRI on Monday. He's uh, not going to play this week. No, they're a Thursday night football game against the 49ers. Uh, the Giants came back, won the game against Arizona. <laughs> oh, man. Great work. Like, I love the tweets See, yeah. towards yeah. us like we wanted the Cardinals to win yeah. that game. Have you paid attention all year? We're trusting the process. If you had a camera in our studio, we were the biggest Giants fans you've ever seen. This was the most perfect outcome for us. If people are like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, they're like, dunking on us. I'm like, for what? come on. Yeah. We I'm got a, up. I'm alley-ooping that ball. Let's go. Oh, yeah. man. We, we, we <laughs> shellacked the Giants to start and showed some great heart yeah, and some yeah. grit real, real and determination. And then we lost, which is fantastic. Did you guys see that Marvin Harrison highlight over the weekend? Oh, yeah. <laughs> come on, people. Caleb Williams, but come for, on down. Look, for Saquon, he's probably not in this week. They The, the first things I was reading was – Ordinary ankle sprain versus high ankle sprain. Mm, okay. That was the hope. That's what the MRI is for. They're going to find out. They, the belief is that it's a normal uh, ankle sprain. The MRI will confirm whether it's high or not. Here's some significant yeah. news on one of the biggest storylines so far this season in the NFL and in fantasy. Joe Burrow aggravated the calf injury at the end of the game. Yeesh. Likely to linger for multiple weeks, according to our injury expert, Matthew Betts. Minimal mobility out of the pocket for Burrow. If he plays, that's going to be the concern. They have looked bad on offense. Jamar Chase not been featured. We had a goose from Higgins in week one. We had Jamar Chase now with pedestrian numbers for two weeks. Joe Mixon's really, he's getting by. But this team is 0-2 now in a tough division. Uh, it's a little. I don't know if it's full panic because Joe Burrow is that guy, right? I mean, he's he's certainly capable of coming out next week, the week after, putting up forty points and making you forget about this. It's yeah, possible. for sure. For sure, he can with with the weapons he has. Absolutely, and I and I expect towards the end of the year, uh, the second half of the season, I, I think they'll they'll bounce back completely. I'm not ever going to rule out this Bengals offense, but for fantasy purposes, for Joe Burrow. You one thing we know is that he's not going to scramble. He's not going to run. If he's nursing a calf issue, he is purely a pocket passer. And when you aren't adding, you know, even just 20, 30 yards on the ground, a couple scrambles here and there to your fantasy usage, you have to get the three touchdowns. You've got to go 300 yards and three to have a in, – in today's fantasy football right. while you've got these Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen's got – you know, guys just running like crazy – I like how you left Justin Fields off of that. That was smart. Yeah, well, Justin Fields will run yeah. a lot, and I do think brighter fantasy days are ahead for Justin Fields. But, um, yeah, I mean, Joe Burrow is going to be someone that you need to take a look at weekly matchups and you need to consider until he looks healthy and is dominating, which he will do. You don't drop him, but you consider starts. You consider matchups and you say, hey, maybe I should grab – You know, if The you problem is it's going to be choices like Daniel Jones – Mm -hmm. Jared Goff, Brock Purdy. Well, and, and, and those are choices for Fields managers too, because that I mean we're we're 
previewing the duds here, but uh, Burrow and Fields are are high draft capital selections that are sending chills down the spines of fantasy managers. Yeah, and I I believe that you named a perfect pair of streaming options where you look at the matchup and you say, oh, against Arizona, uh, Daniel Jones should have a good game. Oh, he did. Jared Goff at home against Seattle, he should have a great game. I believe he's he did. home against Atlanta next week. It, it, I don't I don't think Atlanta's a great matchup but he's a home it's, match. It's so you, home. you look at those and when there's a good matchup you put them in your lineup david montgomery exited. Uh, real i have one more quick note on joe mm-hmm. burrow here mm-hmm. sorry uh because this affects the fantasy football world if joe burrow does in fact miss time that means that in my dynasty roster i have to start kirk cousin oh, no. so if joe burrow misses time we will now lose two quarterbacks. You'll lose Kirk Cousins. Yeah, because you're not capable is, of starting that is, Kirk yes, Cousins th- and having him perform. Yes. This is a follow-up from last week's discussion. Is there any chance that the curse is lifted when it's default? I mean, we can hope, right? I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt oh, it. Oh, when it's not a choice when he's <laughs> right. backed into Kirk Cousins? Right, you're not choosing him. Yeah, um, I, like, maybe, maybe. I David doubt it. Montgomery exited yesterday's game with a quad injury. The news as of this morning is that it could take a few weeks to heal. Mm-hmm. And so David Montgomery likely to miss time on this Lions uh, offense. Jameer Gibbs should have more opportunities. He should. It was very interesting in that Craig Reynolds is the next man up, and he basically just came in and took Montgomery's job. Like They didn't go – I mean, anecdotally, he's watching the game. It didn't feel like they went heavier Gibbs. It no. was, okay, well, Gibbs, you stay in your role, and Craig Reynolds is now the, the David Montgomery for the team. That could certainly change yeah, with a week, with of, a week of, yeah. of planning and practice. All right. We have uh we also had Amon Ra St. Brown got banged up a couple times. Yeah. I think he's all right. Right foot, toe. Kept playing. He's tough. Never but, caught a pass after they looked at his toe and foot though in the third quarter. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, at least he, according to Matthew Betts, unless okay. he's a liar. Uh Odell Beckham Jr. exited with an ankle injury. They're saying not serious. They're saying minor, but uh something to monitor. Darnell Mooney exited with a knee injury. They're also saying not serious, probably not relevant to fantasy players. Well, that, I mean, yeah. If you're wondering why Chase Claypool caught passes yesterday, that's because Darnell Mooney left the game. Did you hear he had to? He publicly apologized to his team. Oh, I did. Coaching oh, the okay. players. Okay. Nice. Basically, they they. I'll take that. They kind of said that if he ever does what he did in Week One ever again, they're just gonna shop him. No, they, they will not yeah. find takers. Probably not. Uh, the concussion bug, Devontae Adams, yeah. Anthony Richardson, Jalen Waddell, and then Logan Thomas. Man. And the Logan Thomas hit was from the exact same gentleman mm-hmm. who knocked Jacoby Myers out with a concussion last week. Oh, seriously? So yeah. I hope he finds himself suspended because wow. it was a ridiculous hit on Logan Thomas. And uh, Logan Thomas managed to hold on to the football for the touchdown. There were also players that exited the game and returned. DK Metcalf with a rib injury, went to the locker room, came back. Brandon Ayuk, shoulder injury. He was hurting. Yeah, yes, he, he was. I, I can't believe he came back because he came back and re-aggravated it and yeah, then he, came he, back again. Yep. Garrett Wilson got the wind knocked out of him. Uh, managed uh, probably to, on that huge touchdown run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he almost had, he could add another <laughs> one or two. Chase Edmonds, grade two MCL sprain, going to miss time. Okay. For, for, well, it's, it's for the Bucks. It's just it's another. He got more time than people would have wanted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was in. He was kind of the second player up uh, in front of Sean Tucker, but Rashad White had himself a bounce back game. He really did. So that's uh, he was if, over four a carry too. If Rashad White does what he did last week, then he will hold Dalton to the job. I, and I Mike, don't you, think he's going to keep playing the Bears. Fair, Mike. You you probably missed this, but Salvin Ahmed <laughs> left with a groin injury. Sure, did not play after the second quarter. And Raheem Mostert had himself a day. Mostert had a huge day, and Devon A. Chain actually got into the game. I think he had two opportunities of carrying a target, mm-hmm. but that will be some, it, that will be something to monitor because the if the Miami Dolphins are like honest with themselves, you can't play Mostert like you played him this past week with with everything with the way that his body has broken down year after year after year. You can't run him into the ground. The, that way, you got to get other players and players involved. I still don't see a path for a chain to consistent fantasy relevance outside of injury to Mostert, which is always a possibility. Sure, I, yeah, I'm not. But saying... he could play the Ahmed role in future weeks, which could, you know, that could end up being 28 to 35 percent of snaps. 
Yes. Yeah, and the the so, hope is that he shows something that earns himself more time. Yeah, and they are they were one of the highest uh, passing teams, so he can get involved in that element as well. Any other news that we're missing? Anything breaking this morning from the Hat Club back there? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with the studs and duds. All righty. Getting back into it. Time to talk studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Well, I mentioned it earlier. And and while we get into the uh, the studs, we're going to have some names that weren't kind of consensus high draft picks. And I felt like, you know, two weeks into the season, there's going to be loyalty-based start-sit decisions for fantasy players going into week three. For instance, Damian Pierce. He's had a mm -hmm. rough two weeks. If you watch the football games, he's had no shot. I mean, this has been a guy hitting the backfield over and over again. What was the Houston offensive line situation? They were four. More, of, yes. Yeah, four of their five starters ended up being out for that game. Um, Felt like five of five. Yeah, uh, C.J. Stroud was able to throw the ball, but when they tried to run the ball, that offensive line couldn't hold up whatsoever. And he's not heavily involved in the passing game. So someone like Damian Pierce, you invested high draft capital on. You've got two disappointing weeks. And then you've got players that were lower draft capital or free agents. Kyron Williams, through two weeks, has been great. Brian Robinson is was the number one running back on the week, and he's a top five running back on the year now. Catching passes, scoring, heavily involved. When you look at that situation with Damian Pierce, are you – taking a policy of bench and wait are you sticking with a guy like Damian Pierce you you have a higher draft capital option uh Josh Jacobs who Shoo ran for negative yards it's uh, which is like the first time a rushing champ has done that in a long time uh, Kyron Williams is very interesting because of the Rams have the Rams offense has looked, looked great they've looked very capable I mean there was Sure, there was a lot of nerves from me of with Puka. Let's see. I mean, week one was incredible. Go after it. You have to chase. You have to chase that targets from a player in his very first game ever. And you've got you're going to play him in week two. But I was kind of bracing for impact of expecting the worst, and it was even better for Puka. So, and then and then the same with Kyron Williams of what was the truth going to be with the actual split between him and Cam Akers? I mean, the beginning of the game kind of or. 10 minutes before the game, that became more clear. But the fact that they had that success against the 49ers, I mean, the the Rams have been very, very surprising. And if uh, so, it's it's looking at matchups and things for the like Damian Pierce. Brian Robinson has been great for fantasy football. Next two weeks, Buffalo and then the Philadelphia Eagles. Buffalo's it, who uh, uh, Josh Jacobs just ran for negative yards. Yeah, saying, it, that's some difficult matchups here, but. Then it opens up Chicago, Falcons, Giants. So, but specifically Brian Robinson versus Pierce, that would be a tough decision. But I don't see. Are how you, you trying to move Kyron on down. from Pierce? So I think when we're taking a look at the guys we drafted and how we stick to it versus what we've seen the first two weeks, we want to focus more on utilization. And you know, Josh Jacobs, for instance, his utilization is incredible. He's still getting everything. He's getting targets. He's getting the you know the the snap counts. So I'm in. I, I He is a trade four candidate to me uh, right now. I would absolutely go and kick the tires for Josh Jacobs. Damian Pierce, on the other hand, has not, you know, he, he has 45 not crapped 50% of snaps either week. So, you know, if, if this is a team when you're down and all of a sudden, what we saw in preseason that seemed so enlightening and hopeful was that he was utilized in the passing game completely in the preseason. And now when, it's they've, a trap. And then when they've been down, he hasn't been on the field. They can't run with the offensive line. So, yeah, like Brian Robinson, for instance, who, you know, in his own right, got three targets. Uh, it seems like he is at least somewhat involved in the passing game and was north of 50% snaps. I would rather play him than Damian Pierce for sure. All right, let's get into the quarterback studs, and we can debate some of those decisions on the way. Daniel Jones? 
after being shut out in the first half with an interception and 62 passing yards, he went off in the second half. 26 for 37 on the game, 321 and 2. Ran for a touchdown on 59 rushing yards and 9 carries. He had a great game in the second half. Yes. Like an entire game in the second half. That was great. 259 and 2 plus 58 yards and a rushing touchdown. Pass rate above expectation has led the way for the Vikings. I think yes. they're number one in football. 31 for 44, 364, and four for Kirk Cousins on Mike's bench. The number one quarterback in fantasy football right now. You're welcome. Is he? he is the number one quarterback. Absolutely. You're welcome, everybody. Wow. How many of those points have you had, Mike? Uh, some. I played him in week one. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Russell Wilson. The number three quarterback <laughs> in fantasy football. No. Nope. You want to talk about a trade high. No. Nope. You if if people didn't watch the game, okay, which I would blame no one for not watching that game. The the Manders. Can we be honest? We left. Yep, we we, <laughs> yes. we left the studio with about what five minutes left in that game, trying to get home to the families. Yeah, I listened to it on the radio or whatever. But it's like, yeah, I don't need to watch the end of this game. We already knew what was going to happen. Um, and if you have Russell Wilson in a two quarterback league or something, and you can look to tra he was awful. He had a great game, great fantasy. 50-yard Hail Mary touchdown at the end really pads the stats. It does. But that offense is not fixed. Russell Wilson is not good. What if I tell you that Russell Wilson will be playing at Miami and then at Chicago? I would say that that is a great thing to tell someone else when you're looking <laughs> to unload. All right. So you're out. I, I thought I'm that the out. deep passes were good in this game. I'm not out in the, in the standpoint that Russell can't have good fantasy value. I'm out in the sense that I want to capitalize on this monster game. I want to sell high on someone that might believe in you the box You think he's on score. rosters? In, in he, two quarterback two leagues, quarterback. absolutely. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I mean, I, he's yeah. he's starting for me in one of my two quarterback of leagues. Of course, that makes sense. I, I was and, imagining a redraft league. In single quarterback, you'd be selling the waiver wire. Jalen Hurts. Bounce back game, offense doesn't look great, doesn't matter. He's going to score when you give him one yard and a tush push. Yep. Josh Jobs, he had a good game. He did. Second half was rough. Josh Allen, you expected this, 31 for 37, 274 and three. Uh, did not run the ball very much, didn't need to. They crushed the Raiders. Geno Smith bounced back uh, game. Yeah, that was there great There we to see. go. And he got hand in hand, we'll talk about Lockett, but – I hope you didn't move away from one bad game from a great player because Lockett was outstanding. As was Jared Goff in the same Jared. matchup, 28 for 35, threw his first interception in a long, long time, yep. unfortunately, but has it landed next week. Lamar Jackson performed for fantasy. Uh, it's still somewhat difficult to watch the offense at times, but it really is. he got it done. Mark Andrews helped, mm -hmm. and uh, he rushed for 54 yards. The news this morning is that uh, Odell Beckham's injury will not affect his availability moving forward. And you would assume that Mark Andrews is going to get healthier and healthier. He he didn't look his same explosive self in, in that week from what I saw. But, yeah, I mean, the fact that around the goal line you got a big target that can muscle his way in for a receiving touchdown like he did is fantastic. He also he played lower snaps than normal. This is also exciting to see next-gen stats talking about Justin Herbert's performance. Push the ball downfield like days of old. Average 10.8 air yards per attempt. That's the most in a game since his rookie season. Noise. That's been the problem. You <laughs> you watch the games and you want to see kind of – it feels strange to say for a young player. Vintage Justin Herbert. You wanted to see those deep shots. Uh, Keenan Allen had a huge game, and, and Justin Herbert looked really, really good. Two touchdowns on those 10-plus air yard throws. And there's a lot of big names in this stud list in terms mm -hmm. of – Players you invested draft capital on with Hertz and Allen and Smith and uh, Jackson and Herbert. C.J. Stroud passed for 384 yards. When I heard someone say, because, you know, the, the Texans didn't have a great game and, and their offensive line was, uh, you know, a complete backup line. When I heard them say, yeah, C.J. Stroud led the league in passing this week. It's like, what? <laughs> That's <laughs> what? You check your stats. But uh, 384 passing yards. Which Nico. will lead to, I was going to say, our wide receiver studs. Nico's going to be talked about. Yeah. Brian Robinson led the way. 18 for 87, two rushing touchdowns, two for 42 through the air. 
and he's the RB3 in fantasy through two weeks and looked – I mean, he, he looks faster this year than he looked last year. He does, year. yes. Big challenge the next two weeks, but he's looked great. Uh, DeAndre Swift, yeah. we talked about that Thursday night game. Yeah. If you had to guess the split between Swift and Gainwell next, you know, assuming Gainwell's back, what's your what's your breakdown? I would guess Swift sl slightly more than Kenny Gainwell. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Raheem Mostert was 18 for 121 and 2 against the New England defense last night. He's the RB5 through 2 weeks of the season. And, uh, you know, he's delivering. First part of the season was what he did last year as well. If you watched the game last night, he talked about putting weight on, uh, working towards durability. But right now he's the guy, and he's the only player to start in Miami. Yeah, and you and you, you keep starting him. He's got Denver coming up, which Denver has a very good defense. But if you look at this last week, they just gave up the number one, you know, uh, game to Brian Robinson. So, Raheem Mostert, the nice thing is, like, the, the Patriots have a good – defense and the Patriots bottled up Mostert on the majority of his runs but when you've got a guy like Mostert who can just break away if you if you give him that sliver of opportunity like he had you're not going to catch up to him Mostert's top top end speed is just too fast Kyron Williams the big day 14 for 52 and one on the ground 10 targets for 10 targets to the targets. air is the headline there yeah. six for 48 and a touchdown he also played 96 yeah. percent of snaps they're their options behind Kyron Williams, if Akers is inactive, is Royce Freeman, R Ronnie Rivers, and um, yeah, Ronnie Rivers, and, uh, and Evans, the rookie Evans. But Zach I, Evans, but yeah, it, I think he might still be hurt. Yeah, I mean this this is the reason why Cam Akers was you know the the shot you were taking in the draft. Yeah, Evans was, was inactive. You you see that the depth chart doesn't look great, and that the offense could be good with Sean McVay and Stafford back and all that. It just it's Kyron, not Cam, and ninety six percent of snaps. The only people that get something like that is usually CMC, the guy on the other side. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey had a hundred percent of snaps for the yeah, first time he did. since twenty nineteen. No yes, snaps for Elijah Mitchell. I, I've been telling you, if you bench Wee. Elijah Mitchell, he can't get hurt. Mike was complaining during this game. Yeah, where is he used the phrase like? Where is Christian McCaffrey? And he's literally <laughs> he's, he out there. He never left the field not every one play. Time. I'm meaning more of like <laughs> three. He was mad when Debo got a handoff. Yeah, he oh, got yeah. a couple in a row. He's like, "Why aren't you giving McCaffrey? You the are ball? so greedy." Uh, I think that there are many people out there who would agree with me. We uh, all may, we all may have Christian McCaffrey on our team. Yeah. Uh, the the bigger complaint was the three targets. Come on. We got we to juice that up. Yeah, complain. 20 for 116 and 1. He had a full fantasy day in the first five minutes of this one. He's also scored in 11 consecutive games. There, There is something special about McCaffrey around the end zone. He, you just expect it. I mean, 11 straight touchdowns, That's if, if he doesn't score a touchdown, how angry are you going to be? Based on how Mike was angry in yesterday's game, very angry. That is correct. We have high expectations for our for our champ. You know who looked great was B. John Robinson, 19 oh, for 124 on the ground. And I don't think there was a player with uh, like a higher negative yards uh, per ex or to expectation. What, what's the phrase? Over expectation? Like? Yeah. He, negative 17 was Algiers' number. Yeah. And then B. John Robinson had five targets, 48 yards on those targets, 124 on the ground. And he pretty much, in my Every opinion, Bijan won the game for them. Every play is so fun to watch him. He makes something special, even if it's like he gets a five yard run. That five yard run, if he if that's what he ended the 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 play with was five yards, should have stopped four yards ago. Because he always ends up doing something special. He looks so explosive, so good. And do not worry that this right here, 124 rushing yards, 48 receiving yards. Do not worry about Algier. Algier had 16 carries. They are going to run the ball so much, it is disgusting. I think they ran the ball as many plays or close to as many plays as the Green Bay Packers offense had the whole game. And this is why I don't necessarily think that the Falcons are a defense to target because Arthur Smith is keeping his offense on the field an absurd amount. Yeah, and uh, to run the ball. Yes, yes, S slowly, methodically, and then beautifully when Bijan's the <laughs> – the ball carrier all right here are some names that uh 
well, they they had some tough week ones, or at least Rashad White did. 17 for 73 and a touchdown. Five targets. Solid game. Philly next week. Are you trading Please. Rashad White high, Mike? Um, Probably not. Just because of, I mean, 72% of snaps, that amount of work, 17 carries with five targets, there aren't, there are very few running backs that get that. I will absolutely be trading high because the week prior, he also got that. He was yeah. 79% no, it, of snaps, 19 opportunities. So, Mike, he, you're not trade high. Well, Jason, you tell are. Tell me, like, who are you, a, who are you able to trade Rashad White for? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I would have to look at a list of players. Would you but, trade him for Damian Pierce? Yeah, absolutely. I think Damian Pierce is actually I, a talented player. Yeah, I do think that Damian Pierce is talented, but his situation is going to be bad. I mean, it's going to be rough for Rashad White against the Philadelphia Eagles this upcoming week. And then the Saints, and then a bye week. I think a month from now – Is you're this gonna, your moment? I think a month from now you're going to have said, man, I wish I traded him after his week perhaps, two good game. Perhaps. Zach Moss played, I believe, 98% of snaps, yep. 18 for 88 and a touchdown – Four targets. Mike start of the week. Zach Moss, uh, he did what we hoped he would do. Everyone on my timeline just wants <laughs> oh. to know. They just want to know how I feel. And I feel great. I feel so great. Well, he did not turn out to be the difference between a, a win or a loss for you, which he, he very well could have. I I, I had a, a nice win uh, over Owl back there. How's that oh, feel? Well, How's bring, that taste? Bringing you, that up. You huh? weren't worried, but then uh, you got shellacked. He did talk a lot of crap leading up to the weekend. I didn't talk a lot, but uh, I did say I was not worried about your team, and I did lose. And then I went to find that post <laughs> where you weren't worried, and I found it deleted. <laughs> so, oh, oh. Yeah. I'm not letting you get those receipts. <laughs> well, those, those are better receipts. I found your shredded documents. <laughs> you, you did find the shredded documents. Uh, but, but as far as Zach Moss going forward, He's uh, going to be the dude. He is absolutely going to receive a ton of work. It's going to be a very Rashad White situation. Now, I, obviously, this last week, I, I traded him. I'm happy he's not on my team. He's not <laughs> talented. But he was good. He was a good start. He was in my DraftKings lineup. We, we recommended him. You know, we told people to start him. Mike, it was your start of yeah. the week. Going forward. Five a carry. I don't think. Well, right, because it was the Houston Texans. The like historically worst rush defense from last year has carried over to this year. They're giving up tons of rushing touchdowns. I don't think that that is going to continue going forward as far as efficiency and, and good performance, but he will be a volume play. Probably. I think a flex option, very similar to Rashad white to me going forward. Here's a player that's difficult to know what to do. James cook was 17 for one twenty three. Four targets. He's going to keep getting the targets in this offense. And yet, maybe it's greed, but I was really hoping for more from James Cook. And unfortunately, it's played out in some ways as as the fears in some of our minds have, have said that like James Cook plays explosively and then he comes out inside the 15, inside the 10. And it was Latavius Murray and it was Damian Harris on those high-value touches, and yet this was a big week for James Cook, and he's certainly capable of doing this on the regular. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people are going to say to themselves, well, maybe he'll get involved, maybe he'll prove himself and get the red zone opportunities, the goal line looks. That's not going to happen. He, it, It's stupid. I, I don't understand why you take your efficient players off the field in the red zone just for a big-bodied guy. But that's what's happening. That's what's happened from training camp on, and that will be what continues to happen. When they get around the goal line, James Cook isn't going to score touchdowns. That doesn't mean he's going to have zero. He'll score from outside of the 15 he had a couple two times. two 10 zone, no five zone. Right. Yeah, when they, when they get down on the goal line, he's not in the game, which is dumb and isn't going to change. But he's still, he's still a great uh, – this is an offense that you want a piece of, and I think he's a, a really good play going forward. RB11 on the week, James Cook on 50. He played exactly 59% of snaps for each week. Kenneth Walker, two touchdowns, wasn't efficient on the ground, uh, but that was enough. And Derrick Henry, 25 carries for Derrick Henry. That was he great is a to trade see. four target to me. Oh, really? Okay. Because yes. I, uh, I know, through I the know game. you were swapping on him, but no, I'm, I'm looking to pick him up. The that, snaps went up. Yeah, m midway through that game. You saw like a uh, an almost even carry count between Tajay Spears. We we talked week one. Tajay Spears out snapped him, but Tajay Spears wasn't really involved in 
in getting carries. He only had three carries. And then this last week, yesterday, it was like, oh, man, they're giving Tajay Spears work. They're handing the ball off to him. He ended up with 10 total opportunities, Tajay did. So you're not afraid of Derrick Henry losing work to Tajay? Uh, no. Nope. I think that – I think that the, you can have Derrick Henry be great and more balance in the in the snap count. Those two things can be true. I would try not to have Ryan Tannehill throw the ball with his arm very often. I think Derrick Henry is uh, is a player where I'm I'm targeting the volume, and I think he's going to be twenty plus carries. Okay. He, I I still have fears of the game script of like they were. It was a weird offensive output for Tennessee. I mean, we were uh, talking how how poor they were, and of course Ryan Tannehill hits the big uh, pass play right directly after that, which I believe turned into the Henry touchdown. But like against Cleveland, is Cincinnati? Are they going to be capable? Not sure. But I think that there will be. It's going to be hot and cold with Derrick Henry. It's not going to be every single week. You're really happy, Connor, like we're used to. Connor and Pollard, big games at the wide receiver position. Keenan Allen, eight for one eleven and two. Oh baby, he the the benefactor of no Austin Eckler was not Joshua Kelly. It was Keenan Allen. Joshua Smelly. Yeah. Which is like Joshua Kelly was on the field a ton. He was the guy running routes. He just he got, I think, one target. Mike Evans, eight targets, six catches, Dude. 171 yards. Going beast mode. And one touchdown. Yeah, and a loss. Oh, Mike Evans. I thought we were talking <laughs> Mike Williams. I'm still on Keenan <laughs> Allen and the Chargers and the fact that they lost this game yeah. to the Tennessee yeah, Titans. No, it's no, un no. Unbelievable. I would apologize to the Chargers fans, but they're just there aren't any. Mike Evans, 171 receiving yards. Bucks two and zero, baby. Baker looks great. Could, I enjoyed watching him play football. Could you imagine if the touchdown that he dropped last week? I mean, Mike Evans has absolutely dominated. A uh, great call, Andy. I was I was a little skeptical through two weeks. Uh, Mike Evans has 237 receiving yards only. That's fourth behind Justin Jefferson, Puka Nakua, and Tyreek Hill. And he, and, and he plays the Eagles this coming week, which the Eagles secondary is super banged up, and they've been exploited by Mac Jones and, and uh, Minnesota. Kirk. So uh, don't be afraid of Philly right now. Puka Nakua had 20 targets. Unbelievable. Oh, oh yes, Against baby. the 49ers. He went 15 for 147. He has the most wide receiver targets through two games. In, uh, in a start to a career ever. He was targeted on 40% of his routes. He seems to be teleporting to open spots on the field. He Nothing he does appears anything more than reliable. Like, I watched him play, and, I, and that's not to take anything away from him, but everything he does seems so, like, routine. Like, he runs the route. He's open. He catches it. He runs the route. He's open. This is not Tyreek Hill he, he flashing down the field. This no. is just all reliable puka. It reminds me of two great players, Cooper Cup, Travis Kelsey, where it's like, I just don't understand. Yeah. But they're not it it's just they're always wide open and everyone knows. Like, you know where the ball's going. Why can't defense times. guard these guys? It's because they're just smart football players that know how to get open. They don't measure that at the combine. We talked about this yesterday in the studio. This is what made Wes Welker a great football player. So it made Julian Edelman a great football player. You don't measure this sense of, like, you run a 40 and you do a vertical jump, but you don't do something where, like, the player runs a route against the zone defense and detects where the court, you know, and flows with the quarterback mm -hmm. from side to side or makes himself reliable in that way. And those are players that can sneak through in the draft. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, he ran a 4-7. Who cares? He looked exhausted. Oh, he did. <laughs> on, uh, he had to be. On the last few catches, he, his body language was like, please stop throwing Have me. Have you the, seen his hands? They're, lit, they're bruised. Yeah. It's not, he's like, I'm so tired of being tackled. <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we please throw the ball to somebody else? Uh, and then, then he tried to throw it to Van Jefferson, and it didn't work, so no, they threw it to Puka. It did not. Uh, Puka looks like a league winner right now. Yeah, he looks – Incredible. He just has the one wrinkle where when Cooper Cup returns, what does it look like for yep. Puka Nakua? Because Tutu Atwell looks good mm -hmm. too. Tutu looks very, very good. That's the only concern is that when Cooper Cup comes back, 
who is going to be the wide receiver two? Who's going to be in the Robert Woods role? And to me, I it's think it's going to be Puka. Puka has the body for it. He looks very similar to Robert Woods is another one of those players. It's just such a good route runner and knows where to go, uh, it, w at least when he was younger. Here's the wild thing, too, when you when you talk about streaming quarterbacks, and we didn't bring him up because he only threw – he's only thrown one touchdown on the year. But Matthew Stafford's over 60% completion, over 300 yards a game. Uh, so against the 49ers, he put up 300 yards. Yeah. When you bring Cooper Cup back and you have Puka Nakua and you have Tutu Atwell and you have Kyron Williams in the passing game and Higby and Van Jefferson. Like, and the offensive line seems to be protecting. Oh, my gosh, they are. He's, he's barely been sacked. So big surprise there. Credit to Sean McVay. Credit to Matthew Stafford. And uh, credit to, what is it, Les Snead that drafted Puka Nakua where they did. Nico Collins, 7 for 146. Dude, it's it, it's not just Nico. I mean, Nico had an amazing game, 7 for 40, 146 with the tutty. But Tank Dell with Noah Brown uh, being inactive for the game, like Tank Dell was, I, I think he was like, in terms of snaps, was the number one wide receiver. He played on 79% of the snaps. He saw 10 targets, got seven catches for 72, and the score. Tank Dell, dude, is – and he, he was a round three draft pick. I think that we need to pay attention that Tank Dell might be a real thing too, be, considering the the game script that's going to be going on here for for the Houston Texans. Like, the, they couldn't run the ball, and then their defense lets points happen, so C.J. Stroud and company have to throw a bunch. What's crazy is – so he didn't play the most wide receiver snaps. That actually was Robert was Woods. Was it Woods? Okay. Up at 86%. Who, who had, had a good – Week last he week. had nine targets, six for seventy four, and and honestly, he stepped out of bounds on a play where he he was running down the sideline for a yeah. bomb touchdown. Yeah, so I think Nico's leading the way there because he's the one that that's got the highest probability of scoring. But all three of those guys have had relevant weeks, and uh, Nico helped my fantasy faceoff roster tremendously. Yeah, yeah, he was a great play. T Higgins, Jason, start of the week, two touchdowns, eight for eighty nine, bounce back performance on twelve targets. Uh, if, if if for some reason Joe Burrow is not out there, Higgins and Chase are going to be depressing discussions in terms of starting them next week against the Rams, which I'm sure people will do. But it's going to be it's going to fall into that Garrett Wilson category where people making they were making the start set decision with Garrett Wilson this past week, who managed to have the big play. But that's a tough one when you don't have confidence in the quarterback. Lockett, Devontae Smith, Josh Reynolds, C.D. Lamb. Yeah. Huge weeks for all of them. What do you do with Josh Reynolds? Because I imagine he's still on people's waiver wires right now. We're talking Detroit Lions wide receiver. Week one, it wasn't a huge fantasy DFS. day, but it was four for 80. This past week was five for 66, two touchdowns. You have Amon Ross St. Brown, who might be a little bit banged up. I mean, is Josh Reynolds a – does he have flex appeal until – the Jamison Williams suspension is up. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if, if flex, I think is is right. He's a player you can throw in there and and in the right matchup. You, we know when they're home against a winnable matchup that there's going to be you know what what are the what are the Lions usually put up in those kind of good matchups near thirty points. Yeah. So yeah, if you've got a thirty point game, I'm fine with Reynolds in there, but he's not more than just a spot flex. Do you believe in Marvin Mims after he had five total routes and yet on the five routes, two for 113 and a touchdown? This believe is, he's a is great this, player, but so upsetting. Is this fool's gold? <laughs> people competing for Mims on the free agent market this week? So, I mean, this is just, it's very simple. You need to be aware that he was not on the field a lot. He was not getting a ton of targets. But on the flip side, he is a rookie. Yeah. Targets per route run, baby. <laughs> <laughs> he is a rookie who is absolutely outstanding. Like, this is the reason, you know, we kind of I, – I talked him up. I had him. Dropped him, unfortunately, after week one. And then he goes uh, goes ham uh, on two receptions. But uh, I think you can pick him up and hope he gets more snaps going forward. But you can't pick him up and start him, I don't think, reliably. You, you can't Not start yet. a guy who just had, you know, five total routes but that's in the a, game. That's a – if your team is looking – Solid, like you're really confident in your starters and you have some depth. Marvin Mims is a good stash player. Here's a fun stat. Debo Samuel averages 1.27 fantasy points per rush attempt in his career, where CMC is at .68, <laughs> Chubb is .75. He was involved in the running game, 5 for 38 yep. and a touchdown, 6 for 63 through the air. That was a 
They missed him on two deep bombs that they he could have uh, produced, so that was nice to see. Gabe Davis, bounce back game, 6 for 92, and a touchdown. Gabe the babe. And Christian Kirk. Well, okay. 14 <laughs> targets, 11 for well, 110. Thanks. Thank you, Jackson. But what it, What is happening here? A, a great game, 11 for 110. Uh, Zay Jones. He was the only good performance on yes. the entire so, roster. ETN, Zay Lawrence, Jones, they're all duds. Zay Jones did miss some time in the second quarter. He came back. So it's hard to know if the if that injury that he uh, that he sustained in the second was affecting him throughout the second half. And this was a wild game for for the passing offense. There was at least three, mm -hmm. if I'm remembering it correctly. Three. There was at least three one foot end zone catches, and that did not turn into two passing touchdowns for for uh, Trevor Lawrence. But so, so if you're looking at Lawrence upset with the the box score yeah, I get it, was, it I get it you want your guy to come through but he was so he was a just a fraction away from a monster game yeah he, there should have been three touchdowns and 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 it applies to the other players too Zay Jones yeah. had you know one where his his they they called it a touchdown I think at first uh Calvin Ridley should have had a touchdown they were just yep. pretty close so don't don't go away from the Jags tight end performances this week Hawkinson Henry Mark Andrews and Travis Kelsey and then you saw a nice week from Darren Waller. Yes. So some of the big names performing for you this week. Hunter Henry looked good. Mike started the week. And then, and then like I said, Hawkins in the two touchdowns. So let's talk about some of those disappointments. Pooped in his big boy pants. Well, you just talked about him. Trevor Lawrence, very disappointing. Uh, just completed about 50% of his passes. And, uh, 216, no touchdowns. It was the only game, I think, that didn't hit the over. It was there putrid. Was, yeah, there might, maybe there was two. But, yeah, the, the over bounced back in a huge way. Tua, he had 15 fantasy points in the first half. He had 14 for the game. So the second half, it was uh, a lot of Raheem Mostert. It was a lot of preserving a lead. And uh, they did a good job of basically containing big plays down the field, at least to Tyreek. 21 for 30, 241 and 1. It was tough because this matchup didn't look juicy for Tua. You also dealt with Jalen Waddle in and out of the lineup. Like if if Tua doesn't have both of those guys, it's a problem. Yeah, and and might he might not have Waddle next week. We, we need to pay attention to that. And uh, I, in an effort to maybe start a new tradition here, uh, I am going to, I'm going to give each of you a panic alarm. Okay, okay? and you can have one per week in the duds. And here's mine, Justin Fields. Yeah. Justin Fields was absolutely. Oh, we're, oh he did we're, it again. We're back into the uh, back into the the chicken heater. Uh, <laughs> Justin Fields was impossible to watch play football. It was so frustrating to it, watch him sit in the pocket, staring at receivers, having plenty of time for protection of. Dude, somebody unload the ball. Someone has to Throw be open. It. Throw yeah. the football. I think the first drive, it was like, hey, we need to get DJ Moore involved. Yep. He he, you know, snaps the ball, throws it to DJ Moore. I think he threw it to him three times on that drive. Two big plays. Has and DJ rushing, Moore had a good day. Has a rushing touchdown, and you think, oh, we're back, baby. And then apparently just forgot how to. He just held. He holds onto the ball. In disgusting fashion. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's impossible to watch the depression among Bears fans. I have heard it. I understand it. And I know that Matthew Betts said, I think on the DFS show, like, he's not sure this is going to be your quarterback next year. And I'm not sure he's going to be. Yeah, for the Bears. Yeah. It's... Well, I mean, Justin Fields, if you, two design runs on the season, uh, it was it was just really really hard to watch and and if you don't we hoped he'd make the Jalen Hurts ascension as a quarterback you give him an elite weapon in DJ Moore but what we should have known is that the curse of DJ Moore is stronger than the potential <laughs> of Justin Fields uh, yeah I would agree with that and and here's the thing he was as bad of an NFL quarterback as you have ever watched it was mind blowing he had a play uh, on his own goal line that was. Let me lob it to a defender and let him just walk in for a touchdown. Yep. Absolute travesty. Um, still 
scored about 15 fantasy points. Not good enough. But his rushing baseline for fantasy purposes, he's still okay. And he's you know his monstrous upside. So I'm not I don't like, want to play him next week against Kansas City. Uh, and that's that's fine. You don't have to. But I am <laughs> I, I'm I'm not out on Justin Fields from fantasy. I am absolutely devastated to see that he like we know through two weeks he's not taking the leap as a passer. Not this year. They have lost twelve consecutive games. And they don't I don't think he's got garbage time passing capability. So it's concerning. It's very concerning. I'm not saying yeah. there. I mean, look, I, I went out on record last week and said, start of the week, he's going to be great. Start of the game, went to DJ Moore, scored on a rushing touchdown. I don't know how he had three rushing yards because I'm pretty sure that rushing touchdown was, it was like 15 yards. No, it was just a yard. Oh, it was? Yeah. And that's why he has three <laughs> rushing yards. It was a really big boot, Mike. He ran backwards. It, it, oh, it was a long then, yes. yard. Yes, in terms of how far he actually ran, it was probably about 15. Al, you have Justin Fields. Panic level. What is it? Pretty high, actually. We're sitting here talking, looking at the waiver options right now. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, it, oh, it's, man. it's not good, and, and you can blame whatever you want, but Justin Fields looks like the problem right now. Uh, Speaking of problems. Brees Hall had four carries, nine yards. Dalvin Cook had four heck? carries, seven yards. Four I, I don't, carries. How do you give Brees Hall four carries? Brees Hall went on Twitter and just tweeted out four football emojis, yeah. dot, dot, dot. So he wasn't happy with only four carries. Obviously still looked explosive when given the opportunity. What happened was, you know, the, this game got away from the Jets kind of expectedly, and then they couldn't keep hiding, uh, you know, their quarterback, and they had to let him throw the ball to the Cowboys, and – yeah. You're already seeing the cracks start to form. I mean, Sauce Gardner deleted his Twitter afterwards. Chris oh, Hall did. tweeted. I mean, multiple when players are going public yeah. with complaints in week two when you were one and oh, they don't feel like they have a chance to win with Zach Wilson because they don't have a chance to win with Zach Wilson. Yep, that's why. That's the fundamental reason why. Josh Jacobs, two uh nine carries for negative two rushing yards, still had six targets, five for fifty one. You had Jacoby Myers out with the concussion. You've got Devontae Adams dealing with the concussion. Concern level for Josh Jacobs. I, I, I'm I'm a little bit concerned with the the overall offense taking a downgrade without Derek Carr. I think he will not get back to what he was last year, but I am confident in his usage. Like I said, I would be trading for Josh Jacobs right now. He is absolutely not going to be in the duds on a weekly basis. He's he's getting elite utilization. Concern for uh, well, ETN had a down week, but Tank Bigsby. He had a worse week. He did not yep. get a carry. He did not get a target. But it was actually about the same utilization as the week prior, about the same snaps, uh, about the same snap percentage, and he didn't get many carries the week prior either. It was just around the goal line. He got a touchdown last week that kind of saved him. He is a uh, a wait and see behind Travis Etienne right now, but they the coaching staff did say that they were going to bring Tank Bigsby along a little bit slower to start the season. This would be slow. I would say zero opportunities is pretty slow. Next week against Houston will be very interesting. Obviously, Travis Etienne will be a must, must, must start, but you could see Tank Bigsby, if, if they get up to a big lead, you could see him actually start getting involved next week. Am I, Let me blow I your mind. I thought something happened to Etienne injury-wise in the game. I heard that, but I couldn't. I, like, I can't find anything about it right now, but I remember something going on that he got shook. Maybe he just went out and came back in. Let me Let me blow your mind. All right. Damian Pierce gained 38 yards after contact in week two. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Damian Pierce finished with 31 rushing yards. Wow. Yep. Let's so say it, that again. Damian Pierce <laughs> gained 38 yards after contact in week two. That's great. Damian Pierce finished with 31 total rushing yards. He was contacted behind the line of scrimmage all game long. So, I mean, it, it's encouraging to me that C.J. Stroud – could move the offense with the passing game. Sure. Because they did get in the red zone. He did not score. He he will, I mean, at some point in time, and that may save some weeks for you, but they have offensive line issues. They have scheme issues. They they need more inventive ways to get the ball into Damian Pierce's hands where he is not being hit four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, I found it, ETN. He had, the, he had the cramps. Ah. So. Oh, like tummy? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they, it just says cramps. I, I did see your tweet of uh, Mike McDaniel <laughs> sprinting off of the field. 
Very delightful, Mike. Yes, thank you. I'll leave it there. Josh Kelly, 13 for 39, and a big wet fart for your fantasy team. Yeah. I guess one target. He 79% of the snaps. He he was Turns out he's not Eckler. He was the guy. The the the, the pixie dust that he had in week one, it seems to have worn off. Uh let's talk about wide receiver does. Tell me if you need a panic alarm for any of these guys. Jamar okay. Chase, Calvin no. Ridley, no. AJ nope. Brown. No. Nope. Jerry Judy's first game back. Uh, I wouldn't worry about yeah, it yet. No, I'm not, I'm not excited about Jerry Judy at all. DeAndre Hopkins, four for forty. Uh, Jahan Dotson, three Hopkins, for thirty-three. Hopkins also had the ankle injury all week. He he was not a full-time player. What do you make of the Dotson situation? He he ran more routes than anybody on the team yet again. I'm really upset with how they're utilizing Dotson so far through two weeks. I feel like it's all the shortest little routes that like the little dink and dunks where his he's yards, getting targets. He's, his yards per catch are eight and seven point three, which is not that type of player we've seen him down the field that's he michael pittman be, last year yeah, numbers absolutely it's worse uh, it, it, please be enemy just use dotson down the field he's getting the targets he's just not getting valuable targets so i am concerned with dotson but um you know tbd kyle pitts <laughs> kyle pitts had five targets two for 15 guess what i don't care because this is all that happens with Mr. Arthur Smith. There is no potential for him. Through two through two weeks last year, 10 targets, four catches, 38 yards. This year, eight targets, four catches, 59 yards. They're 2-0. and oh. They don't care about your fantasy team. Desmond Ritter's really not that good of a quarterback. He ended the game, the week, with, with a decent fantasy game. But if you watched... That's what I mean. He's not good. Well... But the Taylor Heineke is waiting. Yeah, why in the world would they put Taylor Heineke in when they're two and zero? Oh, I'm just saying. It, at some point throughout, it's a long season, and if teams figure out how to fully uh, shut down Desmond Ritter, then I got a I got a spoiler happen. alert for you. Taylor Heineke is going to throw the ball seventeen <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, it might be better. How is how I mean, Drake, Kyle Pitts is a cut to me. How did Drake London not make it into the studs? What happened here? That's because your your sliding your sliding me, scale of studs is six. Yeah. What is he six for sixty? Yeah, let me check the numbers. I think he was All six right. for sixty. Is he that was, a stud? It is for the Falcons. Six for sixty-seven with a touchdown, man. That's a stud. There's a lot of six for sixties and a touchdowns though this this week. Is there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, about fifteen fantasy points. Wide, good, wide receiver good, nice. Jason is that a nineteen stud? curly? Uh, no, that's not a stud. We don't we don't talk about the wide receiver nineteen on a week who okay. will be lower than that. I mean, it's a good performance. You're happy with Drake London, but it's not a not a weekly stud. So I'm not okay. sitting here to just dunk on the Kyle Pitts situation. I want to know your actual fantasy opinion. Oh, Kyle Pitts, I would be moving along. Yeah, Kyle Pitts should be hitting waivers. Dallas Goddard through two weeks has been a huge disappointment. We got a new offense there. Are you concerned about Goddard moving forward? Uh, I'm not super concerned because I still believe in the offense. Obviously, Dallas Goddard is talented. We've seen him for a long time. They made an effort to get him involved. Seven targets somehow ended up with only 22 yards. It was kind of like what we just said with Dotson. Everything was like a screen to him. Um, I'm not. I'm not very concerned. Kittle, Higby, and Schultz. Uh, yeah, Higby is uh, not relevant. Higby no. is absolutely someone that I like. That would be. If he's worthy of a red alert, that would be mine just because I thought he was going to be someone that was a PPR machine this season. Yeah. Puka has made him irrelevant. Yeah, when you get 20 targets to one player, it's tough. Dalton Schultz, uh, I just we don't even need to put him on this list anymore. You need to have big pants. Uh, George Kittle, that one was disappointing considering how Ayuk was kind of banged up. You thought maybe George Kittle will get more involved, but nope. Anybody else you want to talk about in the duds? I don't think so. Are you trading Drake London high on six for 60 and a touchdown? Heck yeah. I'm certainly open to it. Uh, all right. FootClanGiveaway.com. We're giving away a CMC jersey. You have time. Signed CMC signed jersey. Signed CMC jersey. Not just a CMC jersey. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. He, he, he signed he's, it. He's put his signature on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's signed. Uh, that's footclangiveaway.com. Big waiver show coming tomorrow. That is it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us. Good luck in your Monday night doubleheader matchup. Hopefully you get a victory. And have two TVs. Goodbye. 
thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.